How many space stations does one planet need? I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, <laughs> and this episode of Right Angle is brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Well, gentlemen, there is a science writer at the New York Times whose name is Kenneth Chang, been there since the year 2000, writes about all kinds of interesting scientific topics. And recently, he did a column about the fact that the Trump administration is planning to accelerate the phase out of its funding of the International Space Station by the year 2024 and to put more reliance on private commercial space station projects. And this has raised a number of interesting issues um, and the idea that you could privatize space, uh, perhaps the primary among them. Now, we've already seen with Elon Musk uh, at uh, SpaceX, private uh, companies are able to launch rockets into space and bring them back safely. Um, but Stephen Green, I think it's fascinating, this idea that somehow there is a perhaps a known limit to the number of space stations any individual planet should be allowed to have. Um, is the space pie uh, not big enough for all of us? No, space isn't big enough. Yeah, I, I have, uh, space is big. Space is really big. You may think the walk down to your local <laughs> chemist is long, but no. uh, sorry, Douglas Adams reference there. Uh, I have two thoughts on this, which is about three more than I usually have. Um, uh, first is this, uh, I don't know if you've ever read any of Paul Ehrlich's environmental doom stuff from the early 70s, but he gave away his hand really early. He's talking about this this tour of India way back when. And his complaint is that there are people everywhere. And, of course, all this doom and gloom stuff is we have to have fewer people. There are too many people. There aren't enough resources. Too many people. Too many people. Too many people. Got to reduce the people. And so environmentalism, at least as opposed to conservationism, which I do believe in, uh, environmentalism is about hatred for mankind. They want fewer people, maybe preferably no people. And you juxtapose that against a story that also came out last week of Jeff Bezos, and I know he owns the Washington Post, which is a progressive rag, but Jeff Bezos wants, he wants more space stations, he wants more settlements out in space because he wants one trillion people, human beings, in this solar system alone, a trillion human beings. This planet's probably going to top out at like 9, 10, maybe 11 billion people, but a trillion people inhabiting this That's another amazing... 900 billion. Yes. That's another 900 billion. That's 990 a big number. 990 billion. Yeah. Yeah, so we're talking yeah, right, just... Right, 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 right. A huge expansion in the number of people. And this solar system, if, we, if we're if we smart and we figure out how to do this, has the resources to support a trillion human beings. And wouldn't that be some kind of miracle? So when he asks, how many space stations do we need? I say, <laughs> all of them. Build more. And the thing is, I've seen a lot of other planets, you know, you've got, uh, and, and Earth is the most beautiful planet, uh, you know, out in space, you've got a desert planet, you've got an ice planet, you've got a jungle planet, you've got a, you've, you've got a, uh, a volcano planet, maybe I just watched too much Star Wars, but here on Earth, <laughs> we, we have them all in this one amazing thing, so get people out into space, move manufacturing out into space, and, and, and have a trillion people all the while preserving, conserving this beautiful, miracle planet of ours. This is an exciting time. This is an exciting thing. And so, of course, the New York Times has to poop all over it. You know, Bill, I think uh, if the New York Times were published on on the planet Mars, uh, maybe their kind of conservatism and skepticism about the potential for private efforts in space would be more justified. I mean, the big story out of Mars today that I read was that they think perhaps the subterranean brine on Mars may contain enough oxygen to support a very primitive form of sponge. Um, so this is, this, and, and, and the 60 like year better. long announcement of life on Mars continues. That's right. So this, not that they found any kind of sponges or any other kind of life, but, but it's possible that it could support such life. Um, so Bill, the, this International Space Station, a 15 nation effort, to build the most expensive structure humans have ever created, a hundred billion dollar floating uh, city that can only house six people at any given time, uh, that costs the United States alone as our contribution to that, and we're of course the major contributor, but it costs the United States alone three to four billion dollars a year to fund the International Space Station. 
Some people are concerned that if we dial back that investment, the space station won't be able to continue to operate the way it has, and the private sector is not yet ready to be able to launch efforts of their own. Bill, in your observation of history, how good are government sources at predicting how private markets will develop? Oh, well, they're just magnificent. That's why I'm such a big socialism supporter. Um, <laughs> first of all, the question, if the question is how many space stations do we need, the answer is how many have you got? And, and, it, and, it, and, it's, and it's worthwhile paraphrasing the immortal um, uh, Ron Swanson uh, uh, by saying, um, <clears throat> I would say to, 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 the, to the American people, I want you to give me all of your space stations. Now, I'm concerned that what you heard was, give me a lot of space stations, but that's not what I said. I said, <laughs> give me all of the space stations you've got. Um, so, look, we should not abandon the ISS. We paid for it. It's, it's virtually the huge burden of the construction and the cost is ours. And giving it up, I think, is short-sighted. I think it's like yeah. giving up the Panama Canal for the same reason. You may say that it's not an economical, dis you know, okay, but we got a lot of sunk capital in this thing. Well, the Panama Canal can't take aircraft carriers. Yeah, but they can take pretty much everything else. You know, we built the goddamn thing, excuse me, beg your pardon, we built the <laughs> damn thing, and, um, and it's ours. Uh, so I do not think we should abandon the space station. Um, although we can't get there without hitching a ride from the Russians, because NASA is being so um, safety uh, mania at NASA, which is the antithesis of what NASA should be doing, has made it so that Elon Musk and others have to put enormous amounts of weight and, and complexity into crew escape systems. And when in point of fact, my, my, my philosophy and this my personal philosophy is, would be, if I sign a paper and I'm going to go up to the space station, I need to sign a paper that says, I am fully advised of the fact that there is no escape system on this on this. You castle. can't bungee and jump that, and, without doing that. Yeah, 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 that's right. And and, and and therefore, I run a risk of, of serious injury or death. I, well, at least okay. in the short run, we're not going up with the Soyuz either after the ballistic reentry a, a week or so mm. ago that has, has put things on hold for that program as well. Well, that was a great example. Um, that, that Soyuz failure was a great example of just how superb the, the Russian uh, space launch system is. They've launched hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those things. And, um, and they've never had one explode. And when one finally did explode, they just came back down again. Sometimes simplicity is your friend. In fact, most of the times. The bigger issue here is, um, is what we were kind of skirting around and what bothers the guy from the New York Times. The, the fundamental issue is owning property in space. That's really what it comes down to. Because a space station is only there for a reason. The International Space Station became a failure as soon as it became the International Space Station. It was going to be the Freedom Station. Ronald Reagan wanted to put it up. It was going to be an American-owned station. Why is this important? Because Bill's such a jingoistic. No. <laughs> I interviewed a NASA astronaut back at the previous uh, establishment, and I discovered that's something I didn't know. The, the, the Earth is circular, as you probably have heard by now. Hmm. And, um, and when you put a satellite into orbit, it, it, it can't go around like the North Pole. It has to go around the whole Earth. That's what an orbit is. The degree of tilt that that, 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 uh, that orbital plane is tilted at is called the inclination of the, of the orbit. And I found out many years after the space station was up and operational, that the inclination of the space station, the tilt of its orbit, is so high that you cannot launch missions to the other planets, which are more or less on a, uh, uh. On, on, a, on a different tilt. It takes too much energy to get that orbit down on the plane where all the planets and moons and everything else is. So the space station is incapable of launching vehicles from near Earth orbit to the moon or, or to other planets because its, its inclination is so far off the inclination of the plane of the planets. And the reason that the inclination for the space station is so high was because we had to get it that high so that Russians could launch from uh, Baikonur Cosmodrome and reach the space station. Russia being far north can't get to an equatorial uh, orbit. So we basically moved the, the, we tilted the orbit of the space station enough so that the Russians could get there. And by doing that, we've essentially made the space station utterly useless for anything other than studying how, how funguses grow in, you know, in the presence <laughs> yeah. of Coca-Cola uh, no in zero idea. G. 
It's true. It's it's so it's essentially worthless property, but it's a ton of money and and it's ours and mostly ours and we, and we should keep going to it. Yeah. But and the changing is, orbits is, is too expensive in energy. You know, we're yeah, never going to get yeah, enough fuel not, up there to it's do possible. it. Possible. Yeah. And then the Russians can't go. And if the Russians can't go, we can't go because the National Aeronautics and Space Administration is spending as much money now as they did when they were operating four space shuttles. But we shouldn't let these kind of considerations get in our way. The, the, look, the fundamental issue is this, is ownership of property in space. If it becomes possible to own an asteroid, the, I forget what the estimated mineral wealth of a smallish asteroid is, but it's something like a trillion dollars in... in and, and, and there ain't nobody living there to complain about the noise either. So <laughs> if, if it turns out that a company can own an asteroid, then you will see people say, ooh, trillion dollars, that's a decent sized paycheck, uh, and, and, and space will develop. But if we have what we continue to have what we have now, which is no, it, space belongs to everybody, please. If it belongs to everybody, please. Uh, it, 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 if, if you're telling me that asteroids belong as much to um, you know, uh, Bangladesh as they do to America, in other words, that nobody can get to it, then I say no. I say, we'll go up and get our asteroids and Bangladesh can go up and get their asteroids. And, um, and if you don't like that, you could start adapting more of our systems because it's our economy and our, and our way of life that allows us to go out and do things like this. And so it's gonna be legal ownership of space, right guys? If you can't own anything, then there's no reason to go. Well, as uh, yeah. the, the oh, Chinese on, let me, begin let me developing, one last thing, Scott. Go ahead. If you don't mind, sure. uh, Bill, you just you, you were so close to saying the perfect thing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say it for you. In space, close. No one, no one can hear you drill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, That's right. That's right. No one can hear you drill. The Chinese are working on their own space station, uh, which I, my understanding was they plan to have that operational, if I read the article correctly, in the neighborhood of, of 2020. So in the not too distant future, they're going to have something up there and going. Can. The Russians have said as the United States backs off um, of the International Space Station and their support of that, the Russians plan to at least keep maintaining their half of it. Um, and so they're going to hang on to that. Um, but the idea that I think that the writer, uh, or at least the editors who wrote the headline, I probably shouldn't lump this all on Kenneth Chang's head because he didn't write the headline. But the idea that the New York Times suffers from is this concept that we can somehow know what the, what the so-called invisible hand of capitalism will do in the future that we can predict that. We can base our projections on what we see now and say, well, gee, there's only one space station there now. How many could there be? Maybe Russia gets one and we get one and China gets one, but really there's no more room for that because this one took $100 billion to develop. But what that doesn't take into account is what we learned in the process of developing a $100 billion space station. And what we learned is ways to do it better, ways to do it faster. We learned that there are a lot of people in the private sector who were subcontractors in those projects that actually made that thing happen. And that NASA really was kind of the general contractor for the house, so to speak. And um, we have a lot of private companies around the world and largely headquartered in the United States who really know how to approach a problem like this. And so I think the mistake people make is thinking that somehow what hasn't been done can't be done. The magic of the capitalist free enterprise system has been that if there's a will, there's a way. And as Bill has suggested, you know, they're, they're going to find a way to make this happen. I would not be surprised if in my lifetime, we essentially have the Sooners lining up across the starting line, getting you ready to baby. stake their claims on the surface of the moon. And let me just say the one thing that I think will get my more progressive and, and leftist friends behind me on this. When we take the moon, we don't have to kill anybody to get it. And we're not going to ruin the environment on the moon. They really don't have anything. So this should get your complete support. We'll say, let's go get that. And maybe we can come together around something like, let's conquer the moon. Let's get Mars. Conquer? Worst case scenario. We're going to kill the potential for some uh, microbial sponges on the surface of Mars. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible. I'm sorry for that militaristic language. I really am. <laughs>